Hello, Blue Table fans. What a delight to see you today. Hey, let's check out some... How do you go from that? How do you break from that into as excited as I usually am? I have no idea. Take two. Yeah, and I'm, ju I'm just going to let it happen this Kay. time. Okay. Kay. Hello, Blue Table fans. And what a delight it is to see you. Hey, so today we got some really great stuff on sale. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, that's great. Okay, so check it out. Got these Space Wolf, Wolf Guard Terminators. Uh, this was a... Uh, a, a trade, so we didn't paint these. You can see pictures of them. I'm going to provide a link. Uh, the, my for sale section is really just a gallery album. You have to email me if you actually want to buy anything. You just send me an email. You say, I want to buy these things. Here's the prices, and I'll send you a total. I give you a PayPal money request. That's usually the best way. Oh, this is really super neat. This is a Lilith Hesperax that has been converted into a Wood Elf Lord. And she's pretty awesome. Then I have these things. I have a unit of Terminators. Here's just a few of them. And they're painted in this absolutely ghastly fluorescent green color. Isn't it offensive to the eyes? I like it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Shannon likes it. Yeah. So there you go. Maybe there's something to it. Have a Dreadnought. Same. So, you know, the price is right, folks. What do you want from me? And then uh, if you actually look in here, I have 32 Glade Guard and 6 Glade Riders as a um, like a Wood Elf scouting party. And these guys have had some conversion work done to them. They were supposed to be Wild Riders, and they actually could be Wild Riders just as well. They have, um, for their spears, they have the Glaives from Dark Eldar Hellions, which is a neat feature, and their horses have been given uh, like little green headdress things. So that's new stuff on the for sale section, so check it out. Hey, hey, welcome to Gately's Shop O Orcs. So check it out. This is the Studio Orc Army that we're putting together for scenario games for Valhalla. Valhalla! I'm still working on my falsetto. So let's eat dessert first and check out this Lifted Dropa. This is from Forge World. And when you buy the Forge World piece, you get this part here, basically. And it's supposed to convert onto a battle wagon. Now this interesting story... Actually, no, it's not an interesting story. It's just a story. This was going to be part of the orcs terrain where they were supposedly manufacturing a battle wagon. And the two pilots up here were going to be just like two orcs that were like welding something on or whatever. But it looks like they're cloistered around controls. And that's what we decided to run with. But the problem is when I put this in, this thing seemed awfully empty, so I created a second piece. <clears throat> this right here, this is the Forge World piece that comes with this, and we magnetize that, and that so it would spin, and then this is magnetized to go in the battle wagon. So this is what it looks like, just bare. So the problem is the major part of it was just blank. So I made this really great um, uh, generator, like an electrical generator, and the wires are the same size and colors as the wires on the lifted dropper. So all in all, it gives sort of a cohesive effect. Not sort of, it gives a cohesive effect. And uh, Wikipedia wouldn't like me very much when I say this is really great. Unsubstantiated, back it up. Well, we don't do that here. So, next shot. And these are really great, too. These are uh, homebrew scorches. And let me tell you how we made them. We took a Defcopta from um, Assault on Blackreach, and they um, basically we cut off all the extraneous pieces, put a barrel on the back. We used lots of different bits, put some uh, tires on it, and scorches on the front. So there's one. There's two. This is probably my favorite one with this little... <laughs> this is the Orcs version of a window is metal bars welded onto the front in intervals. And then this is sort of a trike slash choppa thing. So I'm really eager to use these in a game. Mike Dunn is due here any minute. We're going to get started on our bat rep. So going to get these bad girls a uh, spin. And uh, let me just show you a few other things. Here's a Forge World boss on Warbike, which is awesome. See, again. Uh, we painted up uh, 13 Burna Boys painted up more 
guys that you could shake a stick at. Actually, you could shake a stick at these. By the time we're done, you won't be able to shake a stick at them. Four units of knobs, which you've seen. We got Zagstruck all painted up here, along with all the leaders. Hey, Mike. Hey. How are you? Hey, <laughs> it's Mike. Happiness level up 15%. <laughs> What's wrong with you? I want 30. 30 or go home. Guy, that really, that really was bad. No, I'm not serious. That's great. All right, so, oh, battle wagons. Got the four battle wagons done, all magnetized. This is my favorite death roller. That's the chainsaw from the Stompa. Got two Stompas being worked on downstairs, too. That's pretty uh, exciting. Oh, and here you go, trucks. Enough trucks. I think nine is probably enough. Uh, change some of them into gun trucks. And then this thing, this is a really nifty conversion, very extensive. It's quite wider than your normal truck. This really could be a, a gun truck. And so I plan on making more weapons that will go in the backs of them to make them into something besides trucks, which evidently aren't that good. But in the uh, new Castoral Novum book, they actually made something where the truck, they made a different thing called a Junka or whatever it is. And that's really what the truck should have been. So it might, that might bring these back into competency. So that's all I have to say. And I'll probably edit out all the yelling because nobody likes that. Should I leave it in? Shannon says yes. Shannon always <laughs> says to leave it in though. So really what good is that? It's fine. Hey, hey. So it's like three hey, hey's for this video. Setting up with Mike Dunn. We are testing out our nine objectives scenario. I put little colored markers next to them. That's the actual location of the objective, so three inches from this takes it. And pretty much the same as before, except we scattered the objectives out more. We also made it so that it was long board edges. That'll help uh, deploy the 2,000 points of Orcs and Imperial Guard. And <clears throat> so Mike's setting up, going, setting up first, going first. What else was the thing? Oh, only troops can take the objectives. We didn't need to make any special consideration for that. And uh, we did change it up a little bit just for the sake of doing something a little different. So, yeah, look forward to that as a regular type battle report. All right, bladder levels are optimal. <laughs> so, Mike Dunn and I are ready to head out on our road trip. Yay! Yep, we're headed up north, and we are uh, scouting a location. Uh, Sarah's involved in that too, like you needed to know that. But it's always fun to know the why. So I basically, I basically pressed Mike into service, but that helps because at any given time, I have something Mike wants at the studio. He's yes. like, ooh, space wolves. I'm like, well, I do need a ride up north. <laughs> So, Mike is my chauffeur tonight. Indentured servant, also. Yes, thank you. The devil's always on the lookout for new souls. All right. We're going to do a little Warhammer chat. So, check it out. I went to the uh, gas station to get some snacks. Mike's like, I don't want anything. I'm like, it's my treat. I don't want anything. He's sticking it to me. That's what he's doing. Because last time, I made him pay, and I bought, like, all this I stuff. I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh, so you would you would have got something then? <laughs> so here's what I got. Honey roasted cashews. Fiji. So way more healthy than my usual thing. Um, I wonder if this is really better. So, uh, and then two almond joys. Because almond joys have nuts, mounds down. And now I know why that's why I bought these. It was a little uh, mental thing, because my uh, orc war boss's name is Burzog <laughs> Nut Grabba. So that's uh, oh, that's <laughs> I guess that that made me want to buy nuts. All of a sudden, I'm not so hungry anymore. All right, so I guess I'll start. I obviously we're not moving anymore. I um, have been reading some articles on competitive wargaming, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the hardcore Warhammer tournament scene. And something that occurred to me is that unlike other games, it's hard to change up your army because if you're going to go to a tournament, you actually have to paint 
an army list. So it's so therein lay the problem that you. It's not like magic where you can just go, yeah, this deck is no good, and in switch two minutes cards, you can switch yeah. out something. With 40k, you gotta if you're gonna play in a tournament that requires painted models, you gotta actually spend 10 to 20 hours painting the new unit and switching it out. So it's not so easy to make changes, which I think prevents the full options of the armies from being explored. I agree. Um, That'd be funny if that's all you said. <laughs> I concur. <laughs> Ditto. Uh, yeah, I have a, a pretty substantial Blood Angel force, uh, and I, I'm i able to just kind of switch stuff out now. But I've been collecting Blood Angels for 10 years or something, more than that. Um, but yeah, unless you've been collecting and painting for 10 years, that's hard to do. You need, really you need if, if you were to do every option, almost oh every option in your army book, oh you'd need like 10 to 20,000 points. Yeah. Basically, and they're making the army books now with more and more, more entries. <laughs> Tyranids have like 37 entries. Mm -hmm. Dark Eldar have 44 different types of models. Man, that's a and tough. and it's, I really I think what what they're doing now, like Games Workshop is set for a 10 to 20 year cycle of how to play this game. Uh, right now the um, the army lists and how people are thinking about the game is still in its infancy, I think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, along with, with switching stuff out, I do notice, and it bothers me, that like I have <coughs> so many assault marines, I have so many terminators, but if I want if I want to give them melta bombs and I didn't do that eight years ago, I have to go in and find eight melta bombs or whatever and stick them on and paint those little things. It bugs me to do that. Really? Yeah. Unless you don't it's just or something. No, you don't just say these guys have melta bombs. Well, if I'm playing a regular well, speak game, up, if, it's people. A, if it's a if it's a competitive At, tournament and it, it's what you see is what you get. Do you just show the melta bombs on the whole unit? Yeah, because hmm. I I wouldn't I wouldn't show up to. A I wouldn't know because I don't go to with, tournaments with weird. weird When's the last year? time you went to a tournament? Uh, oh, it's been a few years. Yeah. Wow, it's been yeah. For me, three, at least four? seven. It's been a long time. Yeah. Last time I went to a tournament was in California. I haven't gone to any events in Utah that I know of. We held one at the studio, but I mean, mm -hmm. what does that mean? Yeah. Yeah, I used to do Ard Boys, but... Hmm. Not anymore. So, I've been uh, <laughs> dropping my trash on the floor <laughs> of Mike Dunn's car. Oh no, my cell phone fell between the seats. Ugh. There she is. Fluorescent orange, Sean's new favorite color. And so I'm like, yeah, we're, no, 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 you can turn right here. Yep, that's what they're doing. Oh, please don't abandon us. All right, good. Yeah, we're following somebody. Always a fun adventure, that. And yeah, so uh, I'm like, I'm like the Borg of trash. You will be trash simulated. We will add your trash stinctiveness to our own. Okay, that's pretty bad. Take your motion sickness pills. You're gonna need them. Anywho, so that's the competitive gaming aspect, and I have to ask myself, of course, where do I fit into all of this? Which is, I play for fun. And in a way, I've wanted my, my videos, my channel, my blog, what we do to speak to the uh, the gamer who plays for fun and maybe doesn't go to tournaments and likes uh, the role-playing aspect of of the game and that leads to uh, something I'm doing for Valhalla which is the idea of making it into a uh, more of an adventure like you your commander's name matters in the great story that we're telling. Of course, games will be scored and they'll have objectives, and to a great extent it'll feel like the more official type stuff that you've played, but that the rules of the game will have changed. For example, when you're playing a role-playing game, the DM has all power and creates the scenario under which the battle is fought. And the DM could just crush the players, but that's certainly no fun. 
So, <laughs> unless you're Sean. Unless you're then, Sean. Then it's, then it's the point of the game. Now that is not true. <laughs> I have to speak. I have to speak out against this because when I'm uh, GMing or DMing or whatever you want to call it, I want to make my universe dangerous. You have to. You have to fight to survive. And so there's a thing where you don't really win at a role-playing game. Wow, I must be really just bouncing all around. It's really hard to hold this thing steady. All right, so what do you think, Mike? About you or tournaments, competitive play? Well, I'm narcissistic, so I want to hear <laughs> about, about me first. Uh, no, every, every time that I've played... Sean's a great uh, guy! <laughs> every time I've played He's the RPG, He's the most awesome guy I've ever met! It's been... We, we win sometimes, but it's like by the skin of our teeth. <laughs> and that sense of desperation. Yeah, go back a couple hundred videos and watch the Dark Heresy ones or, or the. Right. What's that other game called? D&D videos. Uh, oh, man. We win, but it's like we're, we're, we have broken arms, we're missing our main weapons, uh, <laughs> yeah. we come out of it with like a shield and a stick. <laughs> um, and that's all that we have left. It's it's a lot of fun. I yeah. would much rather play a hard fought battle than and have it right. be a battle than just be a cakewalk. There's a point. Now we're talking about RPGs and not about Warhammer so much. Uh, except that I'm the suggestion I'm making is that uh, Warhammer is uh, excuse me miniatures battles can be uh, to some extent of role playing. And I think in the tournament scene nowadays, you really do lose that. There's no narrative to it at all. And that's something, at least for what we're doing. And by the way, I'm not on a crusade to change the landscape. Uh, Sarah and I are just doing our own little side thing that we're doing. And we're feeling confident that we can get the 16 people or whatever uh, to our events. And we're, we're trying to make something different. And that's why I've changed it from a tournament. I haven't used the term tournament. It's an event. Because I, I want it to be a spectacle, an adventure. A sort of like a... Um, <clears throat> uh, almost, not exactly, but almost with elements of like a role-playing thing. All right, well, enough of talking about tournaments. Let's talk about something else. What's the next topic, Mike Dunn? It's your turn to pick. How many armies is too many? Ha, ha, ha! That's awesome. That's, that's awesome for me right now. I, I'm going to say no more than two unpainted armies, otherwise unlimited. No such thing as two armies. Uh, too many armies, rather. That works out nice for me. Yep. I have two unpainted armies. Ah, uh, crap. Okay. I'm building oh, a third. What, Space Wolves? Space Wolves is my third unpainted Wait, wait, wait. So, hold on. Um, you, you have an Imperial Guard army. Imperial Guard. Mostly painted, yep. right? Looking nice, well, too. It's, I, yeah, it's done. I have extras. Oh, by the way, Mike is looking for Steel Legion troopers, the old pewter ones, or yeah. uh, whatever they were. So... Uh, get, get, uh, contact me via email, bluetablepainting at gmail.com, to, you know, that thing. Okay, go ahead. I have Imperial Guard. <gasps> I have Blood Angels. Okay. I have... We knew about that. Orcs. Good. I don't have any goblins anymore, I just have orcs. I wait, have wait, 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 orcs for fantasy? Orcs for fantasy, yeah. Right, orcs. okay. I have... Um... Uh, dwarves. Okay. I have high elves. <clears throat> wow. Are high elves painted up? Yes. <coughs> Look I at have you go. A mostly painted wood elf army. I have a mostly painted Bretonian army. Wow. Wow. Um, I just, wow. Yeah. How I are know. you still married? I've been <laughs> I've been doing this a long time. I have a. I have a Tau army that's all assembled, haven't put any right. uh, paint on them yet. Wait, uh, that's like seven so far. Yeah. I Wait, have three Warhammer Fantasy, two thing. Yeah, that's about seven, I think. Okay, go ahead. I've got... What else do I have? Uh, Preptor Press. Uh, I have Cawdor. Okay. I have... Uh, 
Um, I have a huge Condor army. I have Battlefleet Gothic Chaos right. and Battlefleet Gothic uh, Imperials and Battlefleet right. Gothic Space Marines. Now this is painted and these are, unpainted. These are painted. These are all, all painted. painted. Yeah. The except, but you said Bretonians. Well, the Bretonians I'm working on, and the Tau I haven't started yet. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, what else do I have? I have a couple of Necromunda gangs. I have tons of just oh random gosh. RPG figs, like a box of Beastmen, a box of Skaven, whatever random okay. stuff. I have... Do you know how to play Necromunda? Yes. Do you have the rule book? Yes. All right. From, like, 19. Because uh, at Valhalla, that's one of the games we want to have up there just for kicks. It's a lot of fun. <clears throat> so you know how to play it, too. Yeah. It's easy. Well, if you play Warhammer... If you've been yeah, playing it's the same Warhammer, system. Really? It's, it's the same right. thing. Okay. Uh, what else do I have? Oh, I have uh, three... Um, Aeronautica Imperialis Air Forces, oh, wow. whatever. That was a waste of money. But continue. No, that's a great game. I, and I, you I know what? I have to say it's Aeronautica awesome. Imperialis is a great game. It was just beyond the grasp of my feeble brain to understand it. Um, I don't know what else I have. Probably some other stuff that I'd forgotten. Okay. And now starting Space Wolves. Okay. That's why I asked the question, when is, when do I stop? Right. Oh, I also have a whole bunch of, uh, weird miniatures. What's that, what's their game called? Weird? Malifo? Malifo. Really? I have, okay. I have like three of the For nothing but good Malifo. from them. They're putting yeah. out a lot of stuff, too. I haven't, haven't painted them. I've got them all assembled and based on, uh, uh, some, some kind of resin basis. I don't remember the company, but they right. look really good. Top Secret? Yes, that's they what They make good stuff. Top, top Secret. Yeah, we're, wow, we're giving or, plugs all over the place, huh? Is it Top Secret or Secret Weapon? Secret Weapon? Uh, yeah, Secret, secret weapon, weapon is it. That's what My it is. bad. Well, Mike Dunn's got me outgunned. Like, right now we have a Studio Dark Eldar Army. This is for 40k. We got a Space Wolves trade-in that was painted. That's like maybe 400 points. And we might expand that out. I got in a Space Wolf army on trade, like just, you know, the models, not painted. And so I'm going to put up a list for that soon. Uh, what else? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Oh, and then the orcs. And that army got built fast, too. It was, well, I had it. So I just, we just cranked it up and made it happen. And that's, that's at least 4,500 points. So for uh, the Valhalla thing, I was going to have two armies, but I've decided to make the storyline just orcs as the main bad guys, I guess. And then depending on what armies people bring, we'll change the storyline. Probably, It's probably going to be Imperials as the main good guys, and that encompasses about at least a third of the Warhammer armies. Wow, we're going into some nice area here up in the canyon. Look at all that. That's good. You could uh, you could shoot a western out here. Uh, Jeremiah Johnson was filmed up here. Really? Yep. Okay. Great. Up in Utah or just these mountains behind us? <clears throat> really? Okay. Yeah. And actually, Utah is the location of a lot of westerns. Like southern Utah, Moab has a lot of that beautiful red rock. Utah is actually the second or third. <laughs> Just depending on it, it varies, but it's the second or third uh, place where the most movies are made in the United States. Uh, the top three is New York, California, and Utah. Really, New York City, wow. Los Angeles, and then That's Utah. Great. And Utah has uh, pretty um, favorable labor laws too, so that's another bonus. In case you want to bring your money out here. <laughs> 